In communication, mirroring simply means to imitate the voice and body language of the person we're speaking with. And psychology says that if we mirror somebody, it helps build rapport. And while that's helpful, I've personally found mirroring to be a lot more useful to not just build rapport, but to shift energies. The effects of mirroring can be so powerful that they can actually shift the mood of a conversation to our liking. And it helps us take control of a situation. What do I mean by that? Let's get into it. The first thing to understand is that we already mirror people. When somebody yawns, we tend to yawn as well. When someone's in a high energy, we may tend to match it. And most importantly, if we spend a lot of time with somebody who we like or look up to, we might start imitating the way they speak, the way they walk or the way they act in ways that we don't even recognize. But now it's all about making that subconscious act of mirroring something a lot more conscious. So let's go over a quick three-step process that helps us mirror somebody, build rapport, and also shift the mood of a conversation to our liking. This is especially effective if you're giving an interview or are on a date and the conversation is not going where we want it to go. The other person is very closed off or probably not just in a good mood. Let's take the example of a social situation. Let's say you're out for dinner with a friend and she seems to be very closed off. Her body language is extremely tight, so her hands are closed off, she's slouching a little bit, and her tone is soft. Now, if we come in with a high energy and try to change the situation from that level, there's a major mismatch and it usually doesn't work. So we need to match them, mirror them at their level, which means being closed off ourselves, folding our arms, taking a seat back and talking in a soft voice. That's step one. Now step two comes in starting to shift our own bodies. Every few moments, we want to open up some part of our body and help make the tone of the conversation a little more cheerful using our voice. Now, this could mean us leaning in a little more, opening up our arms to expose our bodies to them, smiling every now and then, chuckling sometimes, and slowly talking in a more cheerful and happy tone. And the third step is that as we're making this shift, if we notice that they are responding, which means they are also leaning a little forward, they are also opening their bodies up, and they also seem to smile, chuckle, and raise their tone to a more cheerful voice, it means we've taken control of the situation. And the person we're speaking to does not even know that they are doing this. But that's the beauty of mirroring. The neuroscience of this has everything to do with the discovery of mirror neurons. And it shows us how we develop empathy. Again, in a lot of cases, this is not conscious, but it's just how our brains tend to work. As a caveat, if we start shifting our body and our tone and the other person's not responding, we need to take a step back, match their energy again, and try from there on. Now, of course, this does not work every time. These are not magic beans. These are simple, proven experiments that give us a higher chance of creating better rapport and having a better more fruitful conversation with someone through effective communications. Now, mirroring is just one of such tools. And there's an entire study of rhetorical devices, which we can dive into, which show us how to use certain words, phrases, or sentences that help us be a lot more persuasive and in command of a conversation. We've gone in depth on this topic in a video that you could check out right here.